Hi everyone, this is Jim. Before I get uh, started on this video, I wanted to say that I will be leaving later today to go play uh, at the uh, Pacific Coast Open uh, chess tournament uh, over the weekend, and so uh, I won't be uploading any videos. This will be my last one for a while, and then I'll be back uh, early next week, and I should have some, uh, hopefully, some good games from the tournament to show you. So I will see you then. In the meantime, you know, enjoy all the videos that are on the channel. Check out my uh, playlists page for uh, ideas if you need some. Um, so let's talk about the game. This is my blitz game number 701. I had the white pieces. Played d4. My opponent went d5. I go c4. He went e6. So this is a queen's gambit decline, the most standard of openings. I go knight c3. He goes knight f6. All the typical moves. And now, you know, I usually go knight f3, and I think that's the top choice here and a reasonable way to play, but uh, this bishop g5 move is uh, an interesting alternative, just getting the bishop outside the pawn chain immediately. Um, black usually unpins here, and then um, knight f3 could be the second move, but I wanted to uh, play with e3 immediately. This is um, a new line for me, so I don't know the details of this line, and I'm never sure how long you can leave the c pawn hanging and when you have to finally uh, go about defending it. So e3, which is a reasonable move here anyway, I mean it leads to an okay position, is I was just being a bit cautious. I think uh, if you know the theory then, then knight f3 is a fine move as well. And uh, maybe I'll look into that before I play this again. But uh, anyway, e3 seems to lead to an okay position. He played uh, h6 to kick my bishop back. I went here. He castled. We go knight f3. And now he plays the, a rare move. Um, the, the move I played was not all that uncommon, just not the top choice. But this uh, c5 in this position is a rare move, and it's probably a mistake. Um, black is doing fine here, and the um, typical way of playing is with this uh, b6 move. Yeah, we can, we can look at this b6 setting up for a fianchetto of this bishop. And you see how white has a bunch of different uh, ways they can play bishop e2, bishop d3, uh, rook to c1, or exchanging right away. These are all reasonable ways to play. And uh, it leads to a, a position which is quite solid for black, so uh, no problems in that position. Um, he actually played, though, um, let's back up, he played c5 here. And I think this does lead to trouble for, uh, for black, although I didn't quite play it in the most precise move order. So uh, first, we can take a look at uh, the way I should have played it. Uh, if I take with the d-pawn first, now oh, that's the way I, the c-pawn, yeah, I took with the c-pawn. If I take with the d-pawn first, um, you know, I've got this uh, extra pawn that he has to take back at some point. He takes here, and I can take on um, d5, and he can take with the uh, knight here. Um, or the pawn, but the point is I can keep taking until there's a pawn here. So this guarantees that I can get into this isolated queen's pawn position. So that is um, playing with uh, d takes c5 first. So the way I played it, I took on, um, I took this way, I played c takes d5. And now he can throw in the intermediate move c takes d4 instead of just taking back immediately like he did in the game. And this leads to pretty much an equal position, so this would be okay for black. Let's see, well, black has to give up that good dark squared bishop, but um, but there's no pawn damage. Uh, it's a symmetric pawn structure and even material. I mean, black is slightly worse because this bishop is behind the pawn and my bishop has an open line, but um, that's pretty small, a pretty small difference. <laughs> and the development is about even. Uh, you know, I have, I have two pieces out. He only has one piece out, but he's already castled, so... Anyway, a fine position for black. Um, let's see. So the way it actually went down, though, after c5, I took with the uh, c-pawn, and he just took right away. And now this leads to the position where uh, where white is just a little bit better. This is an isolated queen's pawn position where um, black had to waste a tempo. He had to move the bishop here and then to here, and that's usually a pretty good sign because he's... Uh, these isolated queen's pawn positions, the side with the isolated pawn, needs to go for uh, peace activity. And uh, and if uh, if that side is falling behind in development, then uh, this is just a long-term disadvantage, that isolated pawn. So, uh, so this should be good for white. Um, but I have to say at this point that the advantage shifts back and forth between white and black. So there's no... Uh, 
there's no single mistake that you can say, oh, now the uh, trend of the game is set. Um, there is a trend for a while, and then, then one side or the other will make a mistake. But we get into a really uh, complicated position where it's uh, tough to play the most accurate moves. But it's pretty late in the game where we finally get uh, some kind of decisive error. Both sides are in it. So that makes it an interesting struggle, but it makes it uh, <laughs> difficult to comment on. So I may go over it. I'm not going to comment on every little nuance of back and forth, but just say for the moment that um, white's doing doing good in this position. So let's go forward some moves. I developed my bishop to e2. He went to e6. I think these are all reasonable moves. Knight bd7. Queen c2. A good square for the queen. And also looking at that bishop, which may become loose if the knight moves. Um, he goes rook to c8. Also a good idea, putting his rook opposite my queen. And rook f to d1. I'm going to bring the other rook to the c file. So this rook naturally goes on the d file. I need to uh, restrain this pawn. I'm playing against the isolated queen's pawn. I want to restrain it and get some pressure on it if I can. And he goes uh, queen to b6. So queen b6 gives me a little bit more of an advantage. Um, you know, I have some kind of edge already. Um, this helps because after queen b6, um, you know, I can play knight a4 and uh, win the bishop, and so I'll have the bishop pair. Um, he could have played bishop b4, a little bit of a counterintuitive move, but um, because it's moving that piece a third time. But he has finished the opening. All his pieces are, are pretty much in play here, and uh, he just really needs to get them on the right spots. Let's see, I could play knight d4, and, you know, white's still better, but... Uh, but uh, black is keeping all the material on, and uh, that's what the side with the isolated queen's pawn wants, actually. It wants to keep all the material on and uh, try and get his pieces active. So that would be the way to play it. He went uh, queen to b6. So I, I spotted this, and I played knight a4. So this is the right idea here. I took off the uh, bishop, and then I repositioned my queen. I went uh, queen to d3. The chess engine, for some reason, wants me to put my queen back on b1. I don't quite get it. I honestly don't know why that's a, a better square for the queen. It seems like a, you would like to have it active if you can. But anyway, it's a target, actually. We can see later in the game it becomes a target for certain knight moves, whereas it's out of the way on a b1. It, the knights are not hitting it. But on the other hand, it's kind of blocking in that rook, so I'm not quite sure what the plan is there. Okay, so I went queen d3. He went rook f to c8, doubling on the c file, and, and black is starting to get some pressure on this file. This is a good plan from black. Uh, I went uh, a3. So this is a mistake for me and starts my advantage starts to slip here. Um, basically I was going for this cheap trick, going for the fork, but um, he spotted it and he moved his queen. So so and, and a3 didn't do a whole lot for me. So it's kind of a wasted move. And the chess engine says I should just play something like knight d4, you know, and put that put that knight on a good square. Anyway, I went with a3, he went with queen c7. I got knight d4 in now, and he goes knight e4, hitting my queen. And, uh, oops, knight e5. He went knight e4 first. Okay, so he's not hitting my queen just yet. He's, uh, but he's putting this knight on a good square. Let's see, what about this knight e5 move? Yeah, I think this was a, a, um, a suggestion of the chess engine, knight e5, kicking the queen right away. So the queen drops back to d2. The knight could even come to c4, kick the queen again, and provoke me to trade. And then, um, instead of taking back immediately, then throw in knight e4, kicking the queen again. And then taking the bishop. And the bishop can be taken either way. You can take with the pawn or the rook. Um, you know, I would be kind of inclined to take with a pawn, given all that I said about the isolated queen's pawn. If there's a pawn on c4, um, you know, you can support it with the b pawn. It's no longer isolated. And it'll have a um, pawn side, queen side pawn advantage, pawn majority to play for in the end game. Uh, but the downside is it blocks the C file. So the chess engine prefers the more dynamic move, uh, rip takes uh, bishop. So either of those is playable, though. I just think it's interesting uh, to look at the different styles. But uh, yeah, if you're a dynamic player, rip, rip takes C4 is probably, probably the better move. Okay, he went knight E4 here. And um, I went F3. And um, at this point, the chess engine actually gives me uh, a winning advantage. This is what I mean about things going back and forth. Uh, so uh, the, the other line was, was uh, you know, black was still doing okay, slight edge to white. But um, somehow the way that I get an advantage is, is kind of obscure. And it, it involves this queen b1 move. So he has to move the knight. Oh, well, he threw a knight, 
knight e5 kicking my queen. He didn't have to move the knight immediately. He tries to keep it um, on that square. And then I played some tricky tactical line with knight takes e6. Chess engine says just retreating that queen, put it back on b1 where it want where it wanted to put the queen anyway, and white is suddenly winning. Now, do I believe this? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Why don't you look at this position and see if you think white is winning? Okay, and now let's go. Um, you can pause the video if you want some time to think about it. Let's let's go through this line that the engine suggests. Well, first of all, this knight's under attack, so it drops back to f6. That's entirely reasonable. And one reason that um, that maybe white is much better here is that I can immediately play bishop takes. Uh, f6 and double his pawns in front of his king and he'll be left with a messed up pawn structure uh, but there's even stronger here so f4 kicking this knight say the knight um, uh, you know the knight could come back here the chess engine seems to think this is the best move putting it on g4 um, the queen comes out um, h5 supporting the knight h3 kicking it back and knight to h6 and now, um, and now bishop takes f6, pawn takes, and bishop takes h5. <laughs> That's the whole uh, line given by the chess engine. And I'm a pawn up, and there's a, a disaster of a pawn structure here on the king side. So you can see why white is much better. But, uh, well, it's a little bit harder to see that all those moves are really forced. And they, in fact, they aren't. There were alternatives along the way. But apparently, uh, that is best play for black, according to the chess engine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I totally didn't uh, see that line or anything like it. Although, um, you know, the idea, just the idea of simply retreating the queen, letting him retreat the knight to f6 and then trading it off, maybe that's a simple enough idea that I could have spotted it and played it. But I, I saw a different idea. I saw I could take this uh, bishop with a threat to his queen, and um, this would be good if he were to take my queen. I could take his queen. And I'm a piece up because his knight is hanging, but my knight is hanging. I mean, my knight is hanging, but his knight is hanging. So turns out about even there. Um, but I've started a piece up because I grabbed the bishop. So that would be good. So he has to play pawn takes e6. And uh, this uh, is okay for black, basically. I, I, I had that winning advantage, and now we're back to uh, some kind of okay position. And the reason it is is now that uh, after that exchange, he's brought a pawn forward to help support his weakened uh, center pawn. So normally, you know, I'm playing against the isolated queen's pawn. I, I want exchanges. I want to reduce the material and get a simpler position where I can just pressure that pawn. But uh, but in this case, the exchange also brought a pawn in to support it. So I know really, I really don't have that play against the isolated queen's pawn anymore. Um, let's see. After f takes e6, my queen is uh, still under attack. I have to do something about it. I went queen d4. He played knight c6 here, uh, chasing my queen. But he could have tried um, this interesting move, rook to c2, and apparently this lead to uh, equality for black. So it's kind of a funny line, though. If I take his knight, which I probably would have, and if he grabs my bishop, then he gets in trouble. Although I would have had to spot these ideas, but uh, it's not too hard to see. I, I attack his knight here, and it's pinned. And uh, he can't defend it, so he has to try and unpin in some way so he can try attacking my queen with knight to c6. And then my queen can drop back to uh, d3. And now his queen is hanging and the rook is hanging, and I'm going to uh, win some material there. Um, so the other, the idea behind rook c2 is not to, uh, not to take the bishop right away, but first to throw in knight c6, kicking my queen. And if my queen, uh, say, comes back here to try and defend my bishop, then he can just go back and go for a draw. And then uh, what else? If um, if um, we back up a move. Yeah, after knight c6, if I go queen a4, trying to uh, avoid the draw, now he can take the bishop. And, uh, well, this still comes out, I think, okay for me. But uh, um, let's see. Uh, he takes d5. Yeah, it was my turn here. He takes back queen to b5, hitting the rook. Rook takes e3, queen takes d, cancel that. Queen takes d3, check. That was a chess engine line. And uh, at least uh, 
in this line, black maintains material equality, and I have maybe some kind of hope for an endgame slight edge with the bishop versus a knight, but it's a symmetric pawn structure and all pretty even. So there's either a direct draw by repetition there, or a yeah, or a, a, he can play on with in a, with material equality. So uh, there's some funny stuff going on in this game. Anyway, he went knight c6 first. I went uh, queen a4. I played knight to knight to d6, uh, routing this knight around, and I went rook a to c1. And now this is where the uh, the balance actually uh, shifts, and black is better suddenly. <laughs> it's not at all easy to see uh, why suddenly it should shift because I would think uh, getting the heavy pieces off is good for me. Um, the chess engine likes bishop to g3 here, and uh, it's pinning that knight. So queen e7 to unpin immediately, and now e4 and trying to mess up the center and uh, using the uh, the uh, triangulation of the bishop and the uh, rook against that uh, knight. And, well, the line goes on, but uh, anyway, this should be okay for white, way for white to keep that winning edge. So after rook a to c1, actually, um, um, black is better here, although black has to find the very funny move, once again, a <laughs> strange move, but knight to d4. This is why chess engines are so good at this game. I don't know if anybody would have thought of this move. And even after I show it to you, knight to d4, why why would you think of playing this move? I mean, you're placing the knight. It's not even taking material. It's just sitting here on a square where it can be taken. But it has one point, you can see, which is it's uh, opening up the battery on the uh, C file. So that's definitely a point here. And, um, well, what can I do about it? Um, I should probably trade rooks here before I lose uh, material there. And now the point, he can take the uh, the bishop with check. <laughs> and so I move the king hitting his knight. Uh, let's see, he grabs back here and I can take the knight. So I get my material back um, and he can play knight to c4. And what is this? This is two, four, yeah. It's uh, six pawns to six pawns. But uh, well, black's pieces are more active now and um, I have some weaknesses here. The queen and the knight are coordinating on this square, and uh, there's also this weak pawn over here on uh, on b2. So it looks like uh, black is going to pick up pick up some material here, unless there's some kind of miracle defense. So uh, so that's why these these uh, rook trades are not helping me out. I have some kind of latent weaknesses in this position that uh, black can exploit with uh, some uh, crazy play if he spots it. Anyway, he just traded. Pretty, pretty logical thing to do in the circumstances if you don't spot that knight d4 idea. He plays um, knight to uh, f5, kicking my bishop, and um, I drop my bishop back to f2. Apparently uh, queen b6 there would also be a good move. Um, black is also doing well on this line. It's another way of taking advantage of my uh, my strange uh, or my weakened pawn formation, those weak pawns on uh, on e3 and b2. So, uh, yeah, I just missed those ideas in the game. And uh, fortunately for me, my opponent missed them too. So knight f5, I bring my bishop back. He goes queen to e5. Yeah, and now he's starting to poke at those uh, weak pawns. But when he plays the queen there, I can actually defend. I have a queen move that defends both pawns. And now he played rook over to f8. And now the advantage is starting to swing back in my favor again. He could hold on with rook c7, be about an even game after rook f8. I have some kind of edge here. But, um, well, the, the, the way to realize my advantage is to take on b7. I have queen takes b7 here and for the next few moves, actually. Um, and I just don't play it. I'm not sure why. I was thinking about the center, I guess. This is one of my problems as a chess player. I get kind of tunnel vision. I, I think about one area of the board, and I, I'm not really looking at the other areas. I was thinking about the center of the board here, and um, you know, I'm playing the move f4 here, trying to chase his pieces around and, and take advantage of these uh, pawns here, trying to get pressure against them. This is a holdover from when he had the isolated queen's pawn here, so I guess I'm just <laughs> continuing kind of with the same plan. Drops his queen back to d6. I play rook to d1. Once again, I could have grabbed on b7 there. It was queen to c7. Queen d3. And knight d6. Re repositioning his knights. I go bishop to f3. And um, knight to c4. Yeah, so he's managed to activate his knights uh, pretty effectively. 
Um, it's a tricky sort of middle game. The bishops will be good in an end game, but uh, we're we're a long way from an end game here, and I have to survive any kind of tactics that my opponent can drum up with those knights. So I drop my queen back to c2, trying to get away from some uh, uh, strikes from those knights. He plays queen to b6, hitting the um, b pawn again. I bring my rook over to defend it. He plays queen to a5. Bring my queen over here, getting away from the knights. Um, he goes knight to e7. So he brought, brings this knight back around this way, maybe coming into f5. And I play e4 finally. This is what I've been trying to... Uh, work towards um, you know that idea of undermining those center pawns and I, I totally left the f pawn hanging but it turns out it's a mistake to take it so he could play uh, knight to d2 here that's a, the engine's recommendation and then uh, say b4 kicking the queen trying to win that pawn he can take off this bishop with check and then move his queen to c7 see i can take in the center and uh, now i can take here the queen supporting the rook and uh, after the queen moves we can exchange out on um, on uh, d5 there and uh, it should be an even game after that so uh, so that uh, this rook f takes f4 move uh, gets gets black into a little bit of trouble again let's see i take he takes i go bishop g3 taking a look at his rook oh that, that wasn't here. Um, let's see, he played uh, e5 here. Yeah, and uh, I went bishop g3. And then he went queen g2. So I think it was these two moves. It was rook takes f4 and queen d2. These are, this is where the balance finally shifted for good. So, so up until this point, it was back and forth. But after rook takes f4, it's all in my favor. Yeah, so I took, he pushed, and then I played... Uh, Bishop to g3, hitting the rook, and he played queen to d2. And this just loses material. Um, <laughs> there is a line, once again, a, a line that only a chess engine could love involving exchanging the queens. But the way I played it is okay here. Uh, just bishop takes f4, and I end up in exchange up. And he should probably just take the bishop, and I'll have rook and, rook and bishop against two knights. And we both have queens, and um, you know I'll have the material edge, but the game would continue. Let's see. He traded queens, though. And after this exchange, um, he doesn't, well, he can take my knight, but I can take his, uh, he can take my bishop, but I can take his knight. And so I will end up a whole rook up. And so he resigned at this point. Anyway, a uh, fascinating game. Lots of uh, back and forth there. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And, uh, well, keep in mind that I won't be uploading videos until uh, sometime next week. See you then.